Let's talk a little bit uh, AC power wall. One difference between the AC power wall and the DC power wall is the source of the, the power which is inputting the system. Right, the DC power wall usually is fed by a DC power source which can be a solar system, a wind generator. And it usually takes the DC, puts it through a charger, like an MPPT or a PWM charger, and puts the energies directly into the batteries. But for this, you actually should have your power source quite close to your battery system because uh, trans transmitting uh, high loads of uh, DC requires quite a bit of cabling because usually in smaller systems or DIY systems you will typically work with quite low voltages maybe 100, 120, 150 volts maximum the AC power wall on the other side does not require any power source nearby it just needs a grid connection more or less so any AC plug or whatever outlet in your house can actually charge the power wall so how does the power wall know when it shall charge or not because it typically you have somewhere a power source or maybe you just use it for time-based uh, charging let's say you have a very cheap energy rate during the night time and you want to uh, kind of offset very high price during the daytime by charging up your, your power wall and then use the energy during, during the time of the high, high rate but typically you will still have some power source on your house maybe it will be a grid tight inverter somewhere with a PV normally so you still want to kind of use your own energy but how do you know how does the power wall know if it's not connected to the power source how much power you have right so you need a device which can measure if you have excessive power and pushing something into the grid or if at the moment all your power is used inside your system so we need essentially bidirectional metering and this makes then the decision for the power wall how many of which which combination of charges it shall engage so that we can utilize most of the power you have available okay let's talk about the Eastron SDM120 this is uh, AliExpress you can see the meter including a CT which in this case is a 150 amps only costs 30 dollars plus some shipping in my case to Thailand another six dollars but it's quite affordable here in the description you will not find mention that it's bi-directional meter but I can tell you it is because I'm using it already and if you go to the Eastron website itself you can see that here the SDM 120 CT it has a different you know they have different endings here but in this case it is mentioned that it is bidirectional measurement import and export okay what we need for our Arduino coding 
we need a library which is called the Modbus sensor library and you can find it from Mr. Garcia he goes under the name Penningen and you can find it at github Penningen Modbus Energy Monitor Arduino there you will, you will find all these different folders and for our case do not use any of the newer ones go for the folder which is called old versions and download this one the Modbus Energy Monitor Arduino you will get the Inno file then a CPP file and the Modbus sensor library file while the CCP file I later on all merged into one into the INO file okay so that's it we will pack now our prototype and go to my off-grid power room here on the property here in my resort in Thailand and we will connect the battery there for a test and I have a SM FDM 120 meter in one of the uh, load centers there and uh, we can try to read it out so let's go there but I have to apologize already now the power room is a very dark and cramped and loud space so please forgive me that hi so for the next test which we are doing today for our AC power project we have to come to a special place this is the power room of my existing uh, off-grid solar system you can see the set pip inverter and on the down is a 10 kilowatt lithium battery and here we opened up a power distribution box uh, where we can uh, measure a special feature which is very important for today and the most important feature of the power wall and uh, it's the bidirectional metering of uh, current so we are testing uh, especially two new features on our prototype and uh, I will show you what exactly we are doing and also on the computer then the code how it is implemented. So what we came here today is to see the bidirectional meter we will, which we will use on our power wall. So that is actually the most important feature because we need to know how much power or current is either pushed out of our property or is coming in from the grid and uh, for this we can use this so called SDM 120 meter the brand is Eastron it's uh, a Chinese company and in, in this particular version we are using a CT you can see it here and it comes here so there's a few advantages of this first of all this is quite a cheap meter it only costs around uh, 30 dollars and the second uh, advantage is it's bi-directional which we need to have and the third it is using Modbus and uh, that's actually the reason how and why we can use it so on my prototype which I had to bring here for this test we have for this uh, purpose we had have to use today the max 485 module you can see it here and then we have this stranded cable 
the wire. I just used uh, two strands from the CAT5 cable and this is going to the meter there. And the other feature we will use is actually because we have our battery here. This is a 10 kilo, kilowatt lithium battery and uh, what I want to do is check out the voltage divider so you can see it maybe there it's just three resistors on one side we are getting the main voltage here battery voltage it's around here we can see this a meter 54 volts and we are getting in there into our breadboard over the voltage divider and it's going to be measured and shown on our display here. so you can see battery voltage here it shows 53.9 which is quite close but you have to understand this is just a very very flimsy setup so yeah the voltage is changing a lot and yeah it's not easy but it's just you know it's just for prototyping once everything is uh, soldered on a board it will be everything much better. So, okay, let's test the Modbus. So to test the Modbus, we need to use the library which is called Modbus Sensor. Uh, it is written by Jamie Garcia, or he goes under the name Ed Penninken. You can find the software on the GitHub. And uh, this library is especially made for those S DM meters. The only problem was that the original code was not able to read bidirectional current. So I had to modify the code a little bit so that we can also use the export and import power. Okay, let's start the code. and open the serial monitor on the serial monitor you can see this is the return from the slave which is the meter and it gives back all his uh, values and addresses in hexadecimal numbers and then finally a float value which is as you can see, let me take out the camera. So you can see here on the readout minus 1200, something like that. And on the meter, also minus 1277. So it's the same, which is great. And then I have it again here. I'm talking about power readout and this is the same value as before which is coming from the slave but this one is used in my program and there was a problem before the slave was returning this uh, float uh, variable but this float is actually composed by four different numbers and the minus was somehow kind of neglected so when I took that that value to my program on the other side of the program where you then take and make your calculations it was not showing any minus so also the number was completely different so instead of like 1200 it was showing 4000 5000 something like that so it was kind of useless but I solved that problem by just converting the float initially into a string, take it over to the program and then reconvert it from string back to a float and that time the float is just a normal and everything got perfectly. So if we implement all of this code 
in the AC Powerwall uh, prototype software. You can here also see we include the Modbus sensor H and then all all the definitions for the Modbus is a very very extensive part of the program but it's working nicely let's execute that one and let's go to the prototype Okay, let's start up the Powerwall prototype and here you can see we are in mode 1 which is the standard mode and it does show us uh, the state of the chargers and the inverter which is now off after this startup of course and we don't have chargers and inverter connected anyway then we have the battery voltage of 55.3 let's just check it here on the other meter yeah 55.6 very close this time and state of charge time and date and now I have a second page here which I execute by pressing the encoder switch here and then you can read power available 1677 so that's about what is there on the meter but it's an average it's an average over a time period of maybe five minutes and that average is then taken as a decision if uh, how many or which charger will be are then used and the temperature and humidity this comes from the uh, our temperature and humidity sensor right. yeah so it's working perfectly okay so thank you for watching today's episode and if you liked it please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment below and please check out the links for code and references. Okay, I see you next time.